I'm feeling very snatched today with this hair, but I gotta say it's literally just because I haven't washed my hair in really long time, really long time. But I think this is like what you do now when you have greasy hair and it seems to be working. Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rudy and thank you so much for being here. While this is going live right now on your computer screen, I am on my honeymoon just soaking it in. So happy, you guys. I'm so happy because my husband and I, if you don't know the whole story of how we got married and this whole situation with COVID, I have many story times and a couple uh, videos about the wedding itself, but we have been waiting to go on our honeymoon for two and a half years and it's finally here and I'm so happy. I will share so much more about it after we get back because I'm really gonna try and just soak up the moments while I'm there, but I plan on bringing my camera, so TBD on a vlog, let me know down below. But anyways, today we are actually doing my November favorites and fails. And I gotta say, this feels like a significant favorites and fails from the year because there are some products in here that have swiftly become some of my holy grails over the past month and will probably be talked about in my favorite products of 2021 videos that are coming up probably in January. It is a pretty makeup heavy month because I've been doing literally the same skincare routine for what feels like four months at this point and I feel like my skin looks really good right now. So if you are into learning a little bit more about my favorite skin tints, a few new hair products that I loved and quite a few fails, including one that is literally so funny, I promise you will laugh then please subscribe. We talk about more than just my favorites and fails on this channel. We also talk about makeup, skincare, we do vlogging. And um, I have a little surprise for everyone, which is that I am moving. Yes, me and my husband are moving. We are staying in Nashville. In fact, we're only moving like 10 minutes away from our current home. But um, I kind of haven't told anyone yet because I was waiting for our inspection to finish and for us to close on the house. And we will be moving in in mid-January. So very soon, let me know down below if you guys want like vlogs on the new house, empty house tour, you know, just like details on what we're doing. I would love to do that. So let me know down below because I am super excited. All right, let's get into it. All right, actually starting off with a two for one, which is a duo of the Say Beauty Slip Tint and the Tower 28 Sunny Days. If I've been wearing any coverage, whatsoever. It's been one of these two products over the last month. I feel like I spent so much of my makeup career wearing really heavy foundations and never really liking the look of my skin, always getting oily by over mattifying. And as I've gotten older and realized less is more and the kind of makeup that I enjoy, I feel like between the two of these, I truly can't pick which one is my favorite but I really, really love them both. Ironically, I'm not wearing either of them right now. I'm wearing something else, which is absolutely gorgeous that I'll have to talk about soon. That's from the drugstore, but both of these are mineral SPFs. They have an SPF 30, but they are very different in their finish. I actually made a TikTok video about this that I can link down below, but essentially I do recommend the Tower 28 for more oily to combo skin types and the Say Beauty for drier skin types. I also think that the Tower 28 has just a slight bit more coverage than the Say Beauty, but but they're both absolutely gorgeous. If I wanna feel really, really dewy, especially in the winter time, I love going for the Say Beauty. And if I'm looking for a natural, like literally barely there look, I go for the Tower 28, but really they're both absolutely stunning and I recommend them to everyone I know. So if you are looking for an amazing tinted mineral sunscreen, pick up one of these. My first swap is something that I actually don't have in hand anymore, and it was from my Sephora VIB sale haul. I picked up the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless filter, whatever the heck else, concealer. And I actually picked it up because I saw that it was in similar packaging to their other wands, the contour wands, the blush wands, and the highlight wands. And I really liked those products. So I wanted to assume that I would also like this coverage product, but that doesn't even make sense because coverage is a whole different wheelhouse and I really did not enjoy it. It is a very thick, very full coverage for me personally type of concealer. And I just don't go for that anymore. Even if I'm like going out on the town, I still don't go for a super full coverage or mattifying concealer because I find that it just really emphasizes my texture on my under eyes or creasing fine lines in my dark under eyes. Strangely enough, I'm just not a matte girl anymore. So to me, it felt like an elevated version of the shape tape and I'm just have way too many negative emotions tied to the Tarte shape tape. So I ended up returning it. it just wasn't for me and that's okay. I am kind of constantly on the look for 
a hydrating light to medium coverage concealer and you guys know my favorites but i just haven't found anything recently that really hits all of those boxes but i will continue to look the charlotte tilbury one is just not it for me another makeup favorite is something that i've talked about so much on my tiktok and my instagram which quick plug it's at the rudy berry super active on both of those every single day especially on my instagram stories but this is the dior lip glow oil and this is specifically in the shade mahogany and this has swiftly become one of my favorite if not my favorite lip product of 2021 these are viral expensive luxury makeup and it is definitely one that I think lives up to the hype of both the fact that it's viral and the fact that it is expensive. So again, this is a lip oil and this is the shade Mahogany here. You know, it is a very sheer color, but I will say that it gives off a similar vibe of the Clinique Black Honey, which is a darker kind of more terracotta brownish nude and as it sits on the lips it actually develops a little bit more and you might be wondering why this would be worth $35 to me and I honestly couldn't pinpoint exactly why I think this is better than other lip products but it simply is for the fact that it's a lip oil it's not uh sticky it doesn't create butthole mouth which you guys know I freaking hate it stays on the lips for a very very long time for a lip oil and the color lasts for a long time while being nourishing and leaving the most outstanding shine. I mean, look at that on your lips. It's just a, such a unique product. On top of that, the packaging itself is just so cute and luxe and it's just one of those things that I think would be either a great gift for someone because it has such a sheer color. I've also bought two others. At this point, I have Cherry, Mahogany, and Rosewood, and Mahogany is my current favorite. Here is the color now that it's kind of developed a little bit. It's got a little bit of a darker tone here. I'm not wearing it today. I'm actually wearing the Fenty Heat today, but I just really, really love this. And I know it is expensive, but to me, this was worth it. And it's something that I like love using every single day. All right, let's talk about a flop that I was so disappointed in because I really love some of their products and some others I really despise. So I'm actually talking about the brand Undone Beauty. Um, I think that they've kind of tried to position themselves as like the clean beauty beauty brand at the drugstore. You can buy them at Ulta and I believe you can also buy them at Target. I got my stuff from Ulta online and I have a video that kind of went viral online about their water bronzer, which is kind of, um, it's a really unique product. It's a water-based bronzer in this exact packaging and it really sets down and looks exactly like a self tan. It's gorgeous. It's super natural. It's very much something you would wear on no makeup days. So when I was looking online the other day, just kind of looking on Ulta, I saw that they have a water blush and a water highlighter. And I was like, okay, I love the bronzer. Let's try the other two. And I freaking hated them. Freaking hated them. For one, there was only two shades of the blush. This one's in the shade raspberry. And I was like, okay, that looks pretty intense. And hopefully it won't be so intense when it goes on, but it, it's pretty intense. I actually made a video on why I didn't like these. And I mean, you can just see from here, like there are little flecks that have picked up while I've been rubbing it on my hand that just don't blend into the skin. And if you're putting this on top of any sort of concealer or foundation, it lifts it completely. Not only that, but it stains your skin. So like me trying to blend this out, look at this. It's, it, it's just like a stain, basically. If anything, I would say this is a good lip stain, but it worked horribly as a blush, especially if you are a beginner because you have no time to blend it because it, it just doesn't, it doesn't blend. It is a stain. Secondarily, strangely enough, the opposite problem with the highlighter, and look at this. I mean, I've had this for like literally a week and look at this like top here. Let me zoom in. It's got like these little, I don't even know what that is, like oil balls on it, but they're hard and it actually hurts when I am trying to put this on. Look at this. Like it, 
The highlighter had the same issue to me as the uh, blush in that it sets down so quickly that you cannot blend it. Not only was it such a fast drying product, but this is the lightest shade and it was way too dark for my skin tone. So I just didn't like either of them. They actually looked like stripes on my skin and uh, just were not my vibe whatsoever. So I was super disappointed in these considering how much I like the bronzer. So I don't recommend anything from the waterline outside of the bronzer. Another duo that has become a holy grail, literally for me, this month is the Crown Affair duo of the Ritual Shampoo and Conditioner. Shampoo? Shampoo. Shampoo and Conditioner. I have talked about Crown Affair before on my hair video. I have a video called The Infamous Hair Video, which is dumb now that I think about it, but it was infamous at the time. Going over all of my favorite hair products, how I like to style it, all of that. And I talked about my Crown Affair brush and my comb and some of their scrunchies in that video. And I have just always loved their products. They are expensive. However, they work incredibly well on my very thin, straight, oily hair. They don't have a huge product line. They have a shampoo, conditioner, a deep conditioning mask, which I also freaking love. I own their brush. Uh, their comb and their hair oil, which is so good, and their dry shampoo. Okay, so I kind of own a lot of it. I own a lot of it. But this to me is like the perfect daily shampoo and conditioner combo that I've ever tried. I will say you guys know that I love the Kristen S. Gentle Shampoo. I think this might be better for me personally. Is it worth that price for you? Maybe not, maybe you'll continue with Kristen S or whatever drugstore one that you use. But for me, my hair has never felt better than when I'm using these products along with my Bumble and Bumble, um, you know, every couple days and a clarifying shampoo, which I talked about in the um, holiday sets video that I uploaded last week. So check that out, I can link that up above. But something about these, one, they smell so good. It's a very unique scent and it just, smells fancy. You just smell fancy. This conditioner leaves my hair feeling silky, 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 silky smooth without any heaviness, which is really hard for thin hair. Same with their hair oil. I do think it's the best option for straight fine hair. I think that this brand is made for people with hair like mine. If you have coily hair, curly hair, I don't know if it's gonna be enough for you, but if you're like me and you have straight fine hair, definitely recommend trying any of their stuff out or asking for it for Christmas because it is an absolute treat to use. Okay, I told you guys that I would tell you something funny and this fail is the most disgusting fail or beauty product, bath product I have ever used in my entire life. And that is a huge statement, but I am so freaking serious. Okay, so I got a PR package from Makeup Revolution, which I've actually recently asked them to remove me from the list because I just felt like I was getting way too much stuff from them. But included in that package was a bath bomb and it was in the shape of a gingerbread man. And I will put a little video of me saying that I was going to use it. Uh, so you can see what it looked like beforehand. Normal looking gingerbread man. He had no scent to him. And I was like, that's interesting. Usually bath bombs have a smell, but you know, I digress. Ran my bath, plopped him in, went upstairs to get my robe on and get ready. And when I came downstairs and entered my bathroom, I was assaulted visually by a tub that looked like the Loch Ness Monster had just taken a huge piss in my bathtub. I'm not kidding you, it looked like a full bathtub of pee. This bath bomb turns into yellow water. Yellow water, no scent and glitter. If you're wondering, of course I got in the bath, I'm not gonna waste all of that water, but it was the most disgusting, uncomfortable bath experience of my life because I truly felt like I was swimming in my own piss. It was disgusting. And on top of that, there was glitter in it. I was in a glittery, glittery, pissy, pissy bath bath. I can't begin to explain to you how funny this was after the fact and how many people I sent videos of me in my pissy bathtub. I made my husband come in and didn't tell him what was going on and he truly screamed because it was so Shocking to the eyes. And to me, I'm like, did you not test this bath bomb in like a cup of water even to see, oh, you know what? 
we should go back to the testing room floor because this one goes ahead and looks like pee. Um, this one goes ahead and looks like pissy pissy bath when you put it in the water. And maybe we should add a scent to it to throw people off from the piss water. No? Nothing? I was shook. I'm not really a bath bomb person either, by the way, so that really just threw me off. For the foreseeable future, I will be taking bubble baths only. I don't want any more surprise pee pee poopy baths from anyone. Okay, and that's that on that. Thank you so much for watching today. Tons of new content coming for you guys. The next couple of videos I'm going to film are of course going to be favorite makeup, hair care, skincare, body care, and then worst products of 2021, which I have been accumulating over the year. And also maybe we'll do a little trend breakdown video as well. I gotta say, I did not fall into the trends this much this year as I did last year, which like, thank God, because I went overboard last year, but I digress. Love you guys. I will see you next week and I hope you have an amazing holiday season.